Hey there, in this video, we'll talk about the virtual file system from the ABP framework. The virtual file system makes it possible to manage files that do not physically exist on the disk. It is mainly used to embed JavaScript and CSS in image files and use them like physical files at runtime. A file should be first marked as an embedded resource to embed it into the assembly. The easiest way to do it is to select the file from the Solution Explorer and set the build action to embedded resource from the properties window. Now, adding multiple files this way can be tedious. Alternatively, you could directly edit your CSproj file. Now, if the file name contains some special characters, then this could cause some problems. And to overcome this limitation, make sure to take these two steps. And we'll do that in the code part. To register the embedded files into the virtual file system, use the ABP Virtual File System Options class. The add embedded extension method takes a class, finds all the embedded files from the assembly of the given class, and registers them to the virtual file system. And it takes two optional parameters, base namespace and base folder. For instance, this example right here assumes that the root namespace of your project is acme.bookstore, your project has a folder named My Resources, and you only want to add the My Resources folder to the virtual file system. Now, after embedding a file into an assembly and registering that file to the virtual file system, the iVirtual File Provider interface can be used to get the file or the directory contents. The virtual file system is well integrated to ASP.NET Core. Virtual files can be used just like physical files in a web application, JavaScript, CSS, image files, and all other web content types can be embedded into assemblies and used just like physical files. An application or another module can override a virtual file of a module just like placing a file with the same name and extension into the same folder of the virtual file. Now, by default, ASP.NET Core only allows the WW root folder to contain the static files that are consumed by the client. But when you use the virtual file system, the following folders can also contain static files. And this allows you to add your JavaScript and CSS files near your CSHTML file, which makes it easier to develop and kind of cool, right? Embedding a file into an assembly and being able to use it from another project just by referencing the assembly or the NuGet package is invaluable for creating a reusable module. However, it makes it a little bit harder to develop the module itself. Assuming that you're developing a module that contains an embedded JavaScript file, and whenever you change this file, you must recompile the project, restart the application, and refresh the browser page just to see the change. And obviously this is very time consuming and tedious. The solution to this is the ability for the application to directly use the physical file at development time and a browser refresh reflects any change made in the JavaScript file. And the replace embedded physical method makes all of this possible. Now this example shows an application that depends on a module named my module which contains embedded files, and the application can access the source code of the module at development time. This assumes that my web app module and my module are two different projects in a Visual Studio solution in that my web app module depends on my module. A little side note, the application startup template already uses this technique for the localization files. So if you change a localization file, it automatically detects the change. The virtual file system creates a unified file system or runtime, where the actual files are distributed into different modules in development time. If two modules add a file to the same virtual path, the one added later overrides the previous one. So if you need to replace a file of a module, then just create the file in the exact same path of the meant file in your application or module, and it'll simply override it. 
Physical files always override virtual files. This means if you put a file under this directory, it'll override the file in the same location of the virtual file system. So you need to know the file paths defined in the modules to override them. And let's see these in action. And first things first, I'm going to install the Virtual File Explorer module. We'll get to the csproj file of the web host project. And I copied this line, and I just copied the Virtual File Explorer package reference. I copied it from here because I'm installing it manually, and I made sure that it's on the same version of the other packages. Then I copied the dependency to the module class. And I added it right here. And then I copied the npm package. And I added it to the package.json right here. And I made sure that we are on the same version. And to install all the required npm packages, we're going to run the abp install libs command on the web host project. I've got Redis running in the back on Docker. And as usual, we'll be starting the auth server the HTTP API host, and the web host. And we can see our virtual file explorer module up and running. And so looking at it now, we are in the domain shared layer, and this is the module class of it. And here is our ABP virtual file system options and our add embedded method. And so this method will look into the domain shared and add all of our embedded files. And we can see them right here. This is our localization file, and here is our resources. And as long as we are in development, this will be under the replace embedded by physical. Let's take a look at it in Visual Studio. If we take a look at the web host module class, we can see it right here. So as long as we are in development, we're using the replace embedded by physical for the issue management domain shared module, issue management application contracts module, and issue management web module. If we change it to staging from the launch settings.json, in doing so will get us out of the replace embedded by physical statement, and so if there is any registration to the virtual file system, it's going to work in the issue management embedded folder will show up. And so we can see how this method works, and we can also take a look at the csproj of it, and we can see the NuGet package and the generate embedded file manifest to true that we talked about. And we can also see the two folders that I have created, my resources and my resource too. I can create some text file right here, and I could call it text file two, for example. And we can see it. And if we see these asterisks that we've added, and if we take a look at the properties of the text file that we've just created, we can see that it's already an embedded resource because of these asterisks. Now let us take a look at the HTTP client project. We see that we've got our add embedded method right here. And we can see that there is a JSON file right here which is the generated proxy. If we get back to the root, we'll find the issue management folder right here, and then client proxies, issue management again, and then customers, and then we can find it right here. However, if we define the base namespace right here, and we make it issue management, which is the one right here, let's see how it looks if we rerun. You see right here, there are no virtual files. If we get back to the issue management, it doesn't exist as well. We get back to the root, and we can directly see the client proxies, and then issue management again, and then customers, and then the generate proxy. We can see that the base namespace is the issue management that was here before the client proxies. Well, we can, of course, not use that. And there is also the base folder. And we can try the base folder right here with this folder, my resources, which has got resource one as the folder. If we run it, we can see that if we get back to the root, we can see resource one right away, which has got the text file one. So we are right here. The base folder is my resources. If we take this away, 
if we get back to the root, we can see the my resources folder again and inside of it resource one and the text file one. Now let us see how we can use the iVirtual File Provider interface so we can access our virtual files. We've created these two methods, one to get the directories of all the files, and it's just going to take this forward slash as a string and return all the directories, and the other one will take a specific path of a specific virtual file, and it's going to read it as a string. Now checking out the Virtual File Explorer, we're going to go to the swagger of it, and then we're going to get all of our directories. And we can see right here that there are no physical files, no physical directories. However, on the HTTP API host, if we use the same method, we can see the physical folders right here. Why is that? If we take a look at our host projects, we've got the HTTP API host. We can check the launch settings properties. And we can see that it is in development. Which means this will get triggered, the replace embedded by physical. And this is why we can see our physical folders. That's in the HTTP API host, which is this one. However, the web host is in staging. And that's why we cannot see the physical folders. Now, what if we take a look at our domain shared and take a look at this folder, for example, text file two, and we're putting test right here. Let's make it test two, for example, and save it. If we take the directory of this one, text file two.txt inside of my resource two, and we put it in the second method read as string, we cannot see it. And this is in the web host. However, in the HTTP API host, if we try it right here, we can actually see it. And every time we change something in development, we can see that the JavaScript gets updated. And this is the power of the replace embedded by physical method. Now I'm going to delete this file. And then I'm going to name this one domain.shared. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to copy the same thing, the same folder name and the same file name. And I'm going to paste it on the web player right here. And right here, I'm going to change the name and I'm going to call it web. And if we check the swagger of the web host, And see right here, we can see that the last one that we changed is updated. The last file we've updated has the same directory of this file. We called it web, whereas the other one we called it domain.shared. However, if we take a look at the module class of the web layer, we've got a little something right here. The add physical method gives us the ability to register the physical files to the virtual file system. Let me save this and have an example. All the way up here in the web host, I've created a new folder and I called it my resource to the same as this one. And right here, I'm going to create a new document, text document, and I'm going to call it AA in the same way. So it is the same as this one. And I'm going to name it something, for example, right? I'm going to save it, but we first need to rerun it. And right now, when we execute again, we can see that it did overwrite it just because they have the same directory. However, if I were to remove this one and then execute it again, then it's going to look in the virtual files. And last but not least, we can use the iDynamic file provider so we can add, update, or delete a file. Let's try it. We're using this directory for the add and update. We're passing in the value as a string to this file of this directory in the add or update, and we're going to give this directory path as a parameter to the delete method. Let's try it. I'm going to copy this. So right here, let's say sample text. If we execute it, 
and then we take a look right here and paste in the path that we've copied from here. And we can see the sample text right here. However, we can also delete. We'll paste in the path. And then we'll execute again. And we'll get an error since it's deleted. This has been the virtual file system from the ABP framework. Please refer back to the documentation for any points that we could not cover in this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.